ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Humanity Never Dies. In the last episode, we were informed by Tegan of a microchip inside an Advent officer that could prove a lead into what the aliens were planning. Following this information, and after several covert operations, we were sent by the Reapers to rescue a VIP in an underground metro station. During the mission, we lost Pryor, but thankfully gained an engineer and suffered no additional losses. A lot of projects and covert ops were completed, including the increase to five-person squads, which we immediately put to action. On the field, we were ambushed by the Hunter again, except this time we were prepared and took no losses in the fight. Upon our return to the Avenger, we discovered the location of the Templars and started our research into the mysterious microchips. Dr. Tegan, good to see you're doing well. I've come with some orders from the command... Good God, man! What the hell is that? Is that the kind of shit they have to deal with on the field? No wonder they come back bloodied and messed up if that's the kind of... of, of monster that Advent has on their side. Sorry, I, I think I'm gonna be sick. And so we return to the Avenger, go back about our daily tasks. Ensuing a supply raid that's about to happen. We're about to hit the complete alien machinery. So that's all cleared off. We still have no power available for us. So we need to really move things around. We're going to set that gremlin to clear that. We need to put a engineer on that power relay. That'll increase our power by about five, which is excessive, I have to say. Um, but we don't have enough supplies to actually make any new things. So we're just going to carry on our good old day. And as soon as I do that, an alien retaliation happens. So we've got another retaliation that we've got to do in Eastern Americas as normal because that's the only place we've got knocked currently. But that's about to change. We've got a five man squad which we're going to change up a little bit. Going to give ourselves our Reaper cousin who's going to join in. So we've got Carter, Floyd, Fuentes, Chen and Kilby on the job. We're going to go and beat back these aliens attacking our civilians. So here we are on the ground level. The mission is a very basic retaliation one where we have to rescue the civilians, similar to last time, although last time there was a Chosen who invaded, which wasn't great. Although because we had the civilian, civilian the um, Chosen come to us last time, very unlikely that we're going to be attacked this time. Um, I think this is the first mission where we get resistance fighters on our side, which you'll see later on to what they do. Uh, if not, then ignore that comment. We're going to move around the side, we've got Floyd who's going to go and move up. He's automatically in shadow, so even though in retaliations we don't usually get squad um, concealment, we do still get shadow from our operative, who is a reaper. Um, that's, I mean, they're stealth legends, so that's probably the reason why. And then we're going to move everyone around in a general position to have cover of much ground, get as much vision as possible. We can see the muton instantly seen. First muton of the game. Uh, they are very strong. They have armor straight up, which is always bad. They're non-mechanical enemies, so they're quite tough to take out. They have plasma grenades, which are really strong. They have a very good aim. They are impossible to attack in melee, so there's a lot of bad stuff there. And then we see another set so we've got a viper and a normal trooper as well yeah so we do have resistance activity so this was also introduced i believe in war of the chosen where during retaliation missions there are some resistance fighters who come along and can aid you now they are ai controlled so they don't always do the great thing doesn't really matter if they die um but in this case they they're shooting the enemy getting some good shots in doing damage which is nice and they also target all over the case so we've got one that's somehow managing to ricochet the bullets off the side of a van um, which is nice, doing you know reasonable damage. Like any any injuries that the enemy is taking means that I don't have to deal with them, which is perfect. We've also got a really nice remote starts action here, which does 12 damage to that muton, which can be really nice. So instantly take him out, which is fantastic. That means we don't have to worry about the muton, and also what that means is that the reaper is not concealed, um, is not unconcealed. I should say, is still no still concealed. I know what I'm doing. Um, Chen moves up, and we're going to get Kilby to move up as well, around the side. Um, 
going to protect as much as we can. We've got a very low percentage chance of hitting and killing that purifier, so we're going to try our best elsewhere. Just put them on Overwatch for now in case he moves forward, that way we can get some good shots. Carter's going to move up, going to see if we can do anything, but still no vision, so we're just going to go into Overwatch. And Fuentes, who is our new Templar, is going to move around the side. He's technically flanked on that side, however, because it's a purifier, it doesn't really matter too much because he doesn't have any sort of distance on that. Fantasia is instead going to fire the pistol at the Viper. Now, Templars have like an auto pistol, which is kind of lame. Um, get a nice little shot at the purifier from Kilby of Watch, but it misses. However, um, I think that was Chen. His uh, of Watch attack does manage to kill, so that's good. And get the Viper. He's going to go for a shot at one of the civilians killing them off and then the advent trooper is going to shoot at another civilian getting a critical attack. So unlike the previous retaliation mission when each of the civilians had a little circle around them this is in two groups. So we've got this smaller group of civilians so we've got to clear that area then they will all be secured and then we've got this bigger area here that you can see the resistance is attacking um, over there and defending that. One of the things that makes it slightly unrealistic to an extent is the fact that the resistance over there can attack the advent and the advent will not attack them back until that section is activated by us. I feel like it would make more sense if either the advent did retaliate or we, um, or the resistance just didn't activate until after then. Sadly get revealed from that shot there, even though I missed as well which kind of sucks, um, but way ho, what do you expect? It's not the worst. Then we're going to move up with Chen. It's not going to attack anyone. We are a little bit too spread out, and there's not really a good place for us to go around and attack. But Carter is going to go through. 49% chance there. We've got a rend percent uh, chance, I should say. Uh, rend being the melee attack of the Templars, who are mostly psychic melee attackers. So we've got 70% chance to kill Kilby, who does it without a problem, well it doesn't kill but does do 7 damage which means that it's a perfect chance to use rend there um, which is exactly what we're going to do, so we're going to hop around, use the rend with our cool psychic swords doing 5 psychic damage to the viper and then getting plus 1 focus, so we can choose to either momentum out of there or use, which is what I'm going to choose to do the parry skill which um, you do automatically if you kill an opponent think it's kill but it might also just be if you damage an opponent um, and that means that you're immune from an attack which is good. one of the civilians gets killed by the trooper that is active over there and the rest of the resistance fighters move along try and shoot at that guy I'm gonna miss no nope, gets a critical hit three damage done to that guy it's pretty good and this one's going to continue shooting <laughs> that advent trooper I think that's a um, stun lancer actually, not doing too good. And the that stun lancer also There's taking quite a bit of damage. Of down range of your so that's finally all been activated off, back. which means that the enemies in that location in will now feet. start doing damage to us. Oh, and to the enemies in general. Going to fire off Fuentes around, he does a nice little kill, getting himself another focus. So for every kill that they get, Templars gain focus, which increase their abilities. They can use that to fire them off, or they also increase the damage they do in their melee strikes. Um, do enjoy a good Templar. They become better than the Rangers in terms of melee attack later on down the line. At this point, they're not superb, but they're also not trash either. I mean, the they come with some really nice set of skills. Floyd's going to go into Shadow, uh, which once again just puts him back into Concealment and also allows him to move slightly further as well, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to move further off, hopefully uh, flank them good for later. Chen's going to move up behind some cover. Kilby's also, I think I'm dashing everyone up because uh, I want to get into range as fast as possible considering the fact that there I do have to save that additional civilian um, group over there and then Carter's gonna pull up the rear over there so alien activity we've got a lot of civilian killing as they move up into different directions I think that's them actually being spotted by Fuentes got another civilian getting killed they are called a huddled up I, um, it's interesting that the enemy don't use grenades, but I don't know if they've been programmed not to have grenades. 
uh, throwing in there because that would kill a lot of them and would make the mission impossible to succeed. So we got some more, we got an Advent Mank over there along with a Purifier and a Stun Lancer who's been shot up quite a bit and then the Resistance have their go. We're gonna fire around killing that Stun Lancer which is perfect, that's one less enemy we have to worry about. It is to an extent annoying because it means that it's experience that our troopers are not getting but because of the sheer volume of enemies it's probably better that they just get killed and get thinned out even if it's just taking damage because in the end you get experience from the kill not the amount of damage you do um, so the fact that they are thinning out the amount of damage that I need to deal means I'm more likely to get those kills and yeah there's a lot of positives to having these resistance member coming through here it, they're also really good targets for the enemy that means I don't get targeted which is a bit, you know can't complain with that um, but yeah so we've got Floyd has got himself some good potential attacks. I'm just looking to see at the remote start to see if there's anything I can explode again. I deal damage, but nothing too bad here. We're going to go up on top to get ourselves an aim bonus, and then we've got ourselves also two flanks, which is good. See if there's anything else we can remote start. We're not going to shoot with him yet, because he is hidden, so if I manage to kill all the enemies without I'm having to worry about it, then that's good, isn't it? 77% chance to kill with Kilby, who just whiffs the shot completely. Which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we're going to move up Carter, hopefully going to get a good little shot there. Got grenade potential, we've got a flanking shot on that stun lancer all the way over there. But we could also just throw a grenade, which I think is what I'm going to go for. Could do between 3 and 4 damage, then he does the 3, so it leaves him alive. Um, which isn't the worst. Got a little vault going on, we could kill him guaranteed. There we go, 2 damage from that, that uses up one of the Psy Focus. And then we're going to get Chen to go around the side. He's going to fire off against that stun lancer. Flanking 68%. Six damage, which makes it very nice for Floyd to go through and end that guy's life. So, so far, not doing too bad. He does, however, get revealed, which kind of sucks. So, we've taken out most of the enemies around that side. We've only got this flank to deal with now. Sadly the Advent Trooper does manage to kill off one of the resistance fighters and the rest of them are just going to go for civilians. So we are losing guys very quickly and it's a bit of a pain that that is happening. Got Purify going around the side, he's going to burn it all up I believe. Or is he just going to go back and forth? No, it chooses to go back and forth, nice. And the mech's going to go through. It's going to has has a very nice ability to uh, fire off some grenades which do do a lot of damage over that distance so not superb not terrible but not superb either and the resistance then has their go they miss quite a few shots yeah it says two misses already we've got a few more to go I don't think they're gonna do too good we've got reload happening here so it does put a shot into the mech so that's always good one more resistance fighter who runs off over there, goes for that trooper, misses as well. So yeah, the resistance not doing too great that turn. Got two of our dudes that are on fire, which isn't great. We've got a reload to do with Floyd as we advance on into the enemy line. I think with Floyd, oh yeah, I'm actually going to go forward. Um, probably a good idea, gives him a target to shoot at that is currently on full health. Chen not doing too good, he's only got two HP left. Going to go over to 68% on that Sun Lancer, which does successfully kill him, which is fantastic. So that's one enemy that we don't have to deal with. Kilby's going to go around the side. He's going to see if he can shoot something. He's got 67% chance to hit the mech and 66 on the Purifier. Goes for the mech, does manage to kill it, which is good because that's probably the most dangerous thing out there at the moment. Leaving only a trooper and a purifier left. So Carter is going to go around the side over here. Say? Doesn't have very good shots in general. Um, oh, it does actually manage to find a 30% shot on that guy. So probably Something not a good thing to go for. Instead, going for the Overwatch. Fuentes has the ability to run, but I decide not to. I'm going to go around so I can flank shot. I can actually vault. Is that a good idea? Is that what I'm going to go for? I am. I'm going to go for a full vault. Doing three out of the potential five damage. The vault does do between two and five damage, so that's very excessive. And one of the civilians turns into a faceless, which is um, let's go with fun. Faceless at this stage, not fun. Um, I don't really know how I feel about a faceless. 
they are very dangerous enemies, but they have zero armor, they're very easy to kill, so it's not that bad. Got an overwatch from the trooper, and the purifier is going to go around into the building, get himself some nice cover. And is he... oh, no, he's just going to hide. Okay. I thought he was going to go and fire off, but he hasn't shot anything, I don't know why. Then the resistance is going to come into their own. Uh, they're going to shoot at the faceless, which is good. Got an overwatch triggered by the resistance fighter, which is actually really great for us in the sense that it means we don't have to worry about it, but also it, the resistance fighters do count as civilians, so everyone that dies is another civilian that we haven't saved. We've only got to save six of them, which isn't too bad because they've still got nine of them left. The trooper does get killed by the resistance fighter, leaving only the purifier and the faceless left. So we're going to get one single shot by our reaper, who is going to deal four damage to the faceless. I think at this point it's pretty much game over for the advent. Um, I don't think they're going to make it through this turn. And if they do, then I will eat my hat. Haha. <laughs> uh, 70% shot on the faceless with Chen, who does just put him down straight away. Leaving only our um, Ranger. So Kilby's got a round, he's got a reload, he's got 25% chance, which isn't great. So what he's going to do is do nothing for now. We're going to go around the side with Carter, going to see if we can get ourselves a flanking shot of some kind on that purifier. But we don't. Oh god, I'm going to have to eat my hat, aren't I? Fuentes has got a 100% chance to strike with his rend, which is what he's going to do, so thankfully I don't have to eat anything. Which does explode in his face, kills a ton of civilians, but it doesn't kill Fuentes. We finish the battle, so yay for us. So we return to the Avenger with promotions all around. Quite a lot, that's excessively lots of promotions going on there. So Carter goes up, we're going to give uh, the medical protocol to her. Then we're going to go with Shadow, who is going to get... It's either target definition or shrapnel. I think I go for target definition, which is really strong to an extent. Are we also going to go for plug trail? We are, we're going to use the soldier AP points to get blood trail. I'll explain those later. There, there's a special building where I get to go into why I'm going into certain things. But yeah, I think we're going to go for Shadow Step for our Templar here, which is just a really strong ability. He's got 5 AP left to go through that. But I don't think we're going to use any of it. So a bit of a yawn there. Chen is going to go for Shredder, because Shredder is really strong. And finally, Kilby is going to go for Shadow Step because Shadow Step is really, really strong. Um, it means that you can just go up and strike at someone in Overwatch. It's brilliant. But yeah, and that's a successful mission done. We've rescued 10 civilians, which is really cool. And we got a lot of artifacts and corpses, which is really nice. Including the ability to get several autopsies. Gonna move up and we also get a level two bond reach, which we can't really do anything about because we don't currently have a training center, although that will change in the future, I am sure. So, that having been done, we can then move on to different things in the thing. We've got a little bit of a cut there. Uh, it's, a, it's a half recording. And move on. So, Avatar actually does increase again. We are reaching the end of that timeline. It's going to be pretty rough. Especially as we haven't yet received the Resistance Communications technology. Which we probably should focus on now. Oh well. Um, then we're going to go for a supply raid. And soon to get the autopsy. I take it this was easier than your last procedure, Doctor. Central, Commander. Yes, I find the process to be far less disconcerting when the subject has already expired. The results, however, it's best you see for yourself. My autopsy of the Advent Captain has confirmed the existence of an implant, similar in design to the unit I extracted from the Commander. But there are differences. What kind of differences? The data you see is being pulled directly from this Advent Captain's implant. The sequence here is essentially you, Commander. Or at least the tactical information they were processing through your mind. As you can see, the data is nearly identical. They were using you against us. Yes, however, the Advent data shows signs of decay. 
Removing the commander from their network has likely caused significant damage. Network? Yes. What we're seeing here is a psionic network. These implants are capable of receiving and transmitting information. A great deal of information. Somehow encoded in a stream of psionic energy. My working theory? Advent uses this network to augment the tactical readiness of its troops, as well as disseminate orders from its central command. Observe. Even in the subject's diminished condition, the implant continues to have an effect. A truly astonishing achievement. Or a weakness. Potentially. But I need direct access to their network to know for sure. I'm guessing that won't be easy. We'd need an active link. And that would mean hacking a live admin officer. Like I said, not easy. Still, it's the best lead we've got. Your call, Commander. And with that information, we have now got a new objective. We've unlocked a lot of research, um, which is mostly all the autopsies, which we've kind of been not doing. The first thing we're going to go is for the resistance communications, not only because it's inspired, but because it we need it at this point so that we can fight against the Avatar project, which will eventually get to a point where we need to deal with it. Got very close to gathering the supply raids, so now we get the reward of the mission for the supply raids. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next mission. Uh, sending out the Avenger straight over to the only place we've currently got unlocked, and we're going to get ourselves kitted out. So we're going to be taking Kazakhs up with us. We're also going to be taking two rookies, Kurosaki and a squaddy Lens, as well as Lau and McEwen. The Golden Duo as we land in Operation Doomfort and go down for this supply raid. This is a very strange supply raid if I remember correctly but nevertheless we're going to try and go there. So the idea of this supply raid, sorry I got random hiccups there, the idea of this supply raid is to eliminate everyone and not damage the canisters which has the supply raid. I am moving the mouse around horrendously. The reason for that is because I'm trying to figure out the uh, general dimensions of this map so I know exactly where I can go, where I need to go so that I can attack because the issue with these maps especially is that there's no general directions. A lot of the maps on XCOM 2 I find sometimes they just put you in a random spot in the map without actually telling you. I feel like a mini map would be helpful but also would detract from the actual mission uh, screen so I like, I like the UI on this, it's very nice but a mini map maybe in the top right hand corner would have been nice just to know the general dimensions of the map that you're playing on because sometimes that gets confusing, which is why you will see at the start of missions I somehow, sometimes, not somehow, sometimes just move the, the map around, the map around uh, quite a bit. So, we are going to move around quite a bit. Gonna see some faceless along with a advent stun lancer as we move McEwen up on top so that she gets her aim bonus. And move around, Lens is going to go and dash up. We are of course concealed for this mission so that's always nice I'm trying to think of where I want to strike so I found the edge of the map here and I think I'm gonna make Kazakhs go all the way around the side mostly because he is very mobile he's got quite a lot of distance that he can move he's also got grappling hook which is very helpful because it's a free action to move quite a considerable distance on some occasions and then with Lau I'm gonna go around the side here the dimensions of this is quite excessive in terms of how far it is. So if I've got an enemy on the left hand side I'm not going to know unless I visit that side of the map. Kurosaki gonna move up hide herself right next to Lentz. Faceless and the Stun Lancer moving up there very slowly. The Faceless really moves a bit like a sloth doesn't it? That's probably the idea. So where do we go next? So with Kazakhs, I'm going to go see if I can use the grappling hook, which I can. As you can see, that's a substantial distance that I've just gained there from that very quick uh, grapple. Moving Kazakhs up, that gives us a lot of vision as well. It lets us know that there is actually a advent forward base there. And it allows us to then move on from there. So I've got a lot of options, potential. I choose to go on Overwatch with Lentz and Kurosaki and with Kazakhs. I'm going to start with a 
grenade from Lau, which is going to deal damage to both of those. No armor on either of them, so not really necessarily full damage on both of them, which is quite good. And then we'll see how good our overwatch is as the enemy turns around. Wow, there's some flappy jaws you got there. Good old miss there, but a hit from Kazakhs killing the stun lancer. Kurosaki killing the faceless. So we got pretty, I'm not going to say we got lucky there, but it was a good choice to do what we did. McEwen is then going to move up to the rocks where Kazakhs is. Uh, gets a nice little vision on the base that we're going to have to go through. And then it's just wondering where we go next from there. So Lens is going to move up. No vision on any additional enemies. Kazakh is going to move around the side as well. A Reaper would be really nice here to do this kind of scouting because we kind of need to. Now it's going to go around the side, get ourselves a nice hard cover. No enemy still, although there is now a under section that we may need to be careful of. This is the kind of area that you want to be careful of chrysalids. Luckily we haven't yet unlocked that enemy, although I'm sure that won't be long. I'm going to move around. So, Kazakh's moving down. Got ourselves a nice little open position. McEwen is on the case, she's in overwatch, we should be good. And then that's where we see the faceless come along from there. McEwen and Lau both miss. We unlocked actually three faceless in a group. Very slimy boys. Oh, he wants to stroke a tree. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, so they move along. Get a nice set of awards. So far, all of them have missed. I say a nice set. All of them are missing. Kurosaki going to hit? Yes, Kurosaki does hit, as does Kazakhs. Both of them taking down one of the faceless, leaving only two left alive. So we're going to go around the side. We're going to see what's going to happen with what. I think we're going to just go straight for an attack with Lau. Who's going to do 5 damage up to that faceless, leaving it open for Kurosaki, who's actually going to go around the side and miss the faceless on the left. Got potential over lightning hands. I love lightning hands, especially with the mag pistol. Doing 3 damage, and that's a free action that you can just do. Do as you want. Leaves him on very low hate points, and then we're going to get the shot. Doing six damage up with McEwen there from the top. So both of them on quite low health. That allows us to put shots where they need to be. 82% chance to fire with Kazakhs, who does manage to take him out. Fantastic. Just needs to reload. We can see Kazakhs that did not use up an action because firing the uh, gun that he has. What is it? I can't remember. It's a bullpup, I think it's called. Um, doesn't actually cost any actions. Oh, it does. It costs one action rather than two. But yeah. And finally, Lens with the shard gun, terminating that final faceless. So yeah, so far, encounter going sublimely well. No problems whatsoever, we're not taking any damage. The enemy have never had a chance to shoot at us. Got a little bit of a <laughs> very fun grapple over there. It's a free action, might as well do it. It also allows us to go and get that loot straight away, which is another Illyrium core. Seems to be all that we're actually getting at the moment is our Illyrium cores. Uh, we are going to dash up down below here. The reason why we're not going all the way up is because we don't want to be flanked in case we accidentally do uncover some enemies. I'm just going to move my cursor around. The reason for that is because sometimes you get cover from rocks which don't exist, if that makes sense. Like, that's where Lens at the moment is next to some rocks that allegedly give him half cover. So it really doesn't feel like it should. We can see there's quite a few crates as well that we can do there. I'm just looking at the dimensions and what I can do. I am going to choose to move McEwen over there. Whether or not that's a good idea does turn out to be a good idea as we don't uncover any enemies. Although if I'm going to move up Lentz, moving him next to Kazakhs would be the best thing. Don't want to uncover any aliens when no one's on Overwatch. That's a really dangerous thing. And we do actually uncover them. Two more faceless and a stun lancer. So we had a lot of faceless here in this. Um, <laughs> this mission, which is very unusual. It's because there's a lot of supplies that we can get. Kazakh's just missing wildly there. But we have our aim going on. So, now it's going to move up behind some half cover. She does need to get those shots off as soon as possible. And then we've got McEwen who is going to go up. But I'm 
think he, okay, I feel like maybe that's not the best thing to do, but McEwen is up there now, so we're hey. Uh, does not uncover any additional enemies, so that's always good. And now it's going to go around the side. We're going to do a flashbang, but I feel like I could have taken them all out. Okay, we've got a flashbang. We're going to go for the stun lancer, definitely a good idea. And one of the faceless. Disorientating them, which is nice, it means that we don't have to deal with them really. Kurosaki is going to put herself just a little bit more forward. Got a 66% chance of hitting the faces, which she's going to go for. Missing that again. So, so far, she's hit most of her Overwatch shots, but not really hit any of the actual normal shots, which is a bit of a shame. Got a flanking shot with the shard gun on the Advent Stun Lancer, which misses. It was a really high percentage chance of hitting, and that just missed. So, not going too well. We do have a justice that we can do. That's what we're going to try. There we go, moving up the Stun Lancer. Going to hit him. Doing four, da four damage. I had another hiccup. And actually allows us to shoot him with a bullpup. So, just this one action. Skirmishes are just incredible. I love them so much. You just go around do one action hits everywhere. Face is going to move up. Doesn't have enough action points to do any damage though, which is fantastic. This one have a do Oh no, he's disorientated, so he doesn't. Can only move like three squares or something. So pretty lucky there. That's about yeah. We took no damage whatsoever. We had some very fluff shots though, so you know these things happen. Dealing three damage with House Sword there, which is terrible. And then Kazakh's got a good little shot. I think he's going to go for this damage faceless and misses. So it's not going too well right now kind of want to kill them. Luckily does manage to get some guaranteed damage done with this grenade. So might as well get the guaranteed damage if that's going to be a miss again, you know. Three damage there, leaving him on four. Definitely could potentially get a kill there, so that's not bad. Lau is not going to do anything yet. What we're going to do is we're going to get Beth McEwen to go down, she doesn't have a shot with squad sight, what is this? I think I know what I decide to do. Well first Kurosaki is going to do her reload and then she's going to strike out at that faceless here. Actually managing to hit and kill that one. Then Lau is going to strike at this face, so she gets herself into a position where she could get... Uh, I mean, it hits, but it probably would be better to just hit there because it was a 92% chance. Now, and then McEwen is going to use her teamwork to get Lau to do another action. She's going to shoot that one and hopefully kill it off without the miss, although we do need to reload. Did I see that right? <laughs> oh no. It's a terrible, terrible things have happened. <laughs> oh no, we don't kill it. We don't kill it in that turn. What is this? We got a pistol overwatch from McEwen. So the creature comes around, McEwen shoots it, does four damage. Not enough to kill it, which means it's gonna get a free hit on all our dudes. Oh, this is awful. Manages to miss though, so it's all good in the end. There's still no damage, although god damn that was lucky and stupid. So McEwen's gonna go with a lightning hand to kill it off. And there we go, that's the end of that mission there. So we land at the Avenger, no damage done, which is great, and three promotions on the way. So Kazakh is going to go, it has got potential getting Wrath, which is Justice but inverted, so rather than pulling them to us, we pull ourselves to them. Zero in, which is very strong, and Tactical Rigging. We're going to go for zero in, which is really strong. I didn't get a chance to have a look at exactly what it did, but it's something like plus 10% aim on someone that's already been hit or something. Um, and then we're going to get Blade Master for Lens, I believe as well as Kurosaki leveling herself up to Sniper. Get ourselves a nice lot of supplies, 163 supplies, bunch of alloys, bunch of crystals, stun lancer corpses, faceless corpses, everyone's a happy dandy person. We can finally build ourselves something fun. So we're going to go with a proving ground that is actually 100% what we're going to build. Mostly because it's very strong in general but also because it's a mission objective and we need to sort out our mission objectives right now because we're 
taking a lot of time of not doing that. Um, just having a look at that, so there's a bond that I need to do, but I need a training center, which is something I need to build. Got enough supplies to build it. I may not even, because I need 150. Supplies are a big problem at the moment, and the reason for that is because I've not actually expanded to any of the neighboring territories, which is something I really need to do. Um, and I promise you that that is something I will be focusing on this episode. Because <laughs> that's what we're going to do for the rest of the episode, is look around. I've got some resistance orders going along, so now I'm going to have a look to see if I can add that to the skirmisher. I'm not sure whether or not I'm able to do so until the end of the week or the weekly roundup or whatever it's called. I'm just having a look at what each of them do. As you can see, orders have already been assigned, so I can't actually do anything with that. But we're going to have a look at what we can do. Inside job's pretty good, actually. Extra intel. Not that we need it. We've got 212 intel, so we could probably spend that intel on something. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the supplies. Hopefully unlock ourselves more, because we're going to need more and more supplies as we go on. But soon the resistance comms will be complete, not before the Avatar project. Ah, covert action. This is why I love covert actions, they're just so good. Um, so far logo and that is all done. So we're going to move up, we've got Hunt the Chosen 2, so we've got Lau up there. We're going to send Lau along with McEwen. Both of them all together, and as well as an additional sergeant. So what we're going to do is we're going to send Kilby on the case as a uh, got the, the dream team forming slowly with Lau McEwen and Kilby being part of the A-team. Um, so put them on covert action, hopefully we won't get stopped for any reason. But hey, but yeah, so anyway we get some resistance comms coming soon. Just gives us more research, with which, which is what we're going to be doing, some autopsies which are instant. I am at a loss for words to describe the difficulties we have had in attempting to handle this creature, affectionately known as the Faceless, to our troops. The nebulous form of its physical structure, including a pliable, semi-solid outer layer, seems to be slowly degrading now that the creature has expired. There is also a pungent odor that only seems to grow stronger as time passes. I've often wondered how the aliens could conceive of such a being. Is there another world? The Advent Stonlancer was apparently outfitted with the intention of serving as a civilian peacekeeping unit within the city centers. Although they are equipped with weapons capable of administering non-lethal blows, recent reports indicate an increasingly aggressive stance taken by these units. So those two autopsies give us access to mimic beacons which are air and the uh, new swords which are magnetic tier which is really strong and that I really like. So we've got a few more autopsies that we could be doing but I think the thing that we're going to go for is the resistance radio. What do we go for? See either that or experimental weapons. The thing is all these autopsies are really good. Um, yeah that's what I thought. So yeah, the, but the, the autopsies unlock basically all of the next tier um, researches and allow us to get like plasma stuff later on, but we need to get through the mission objectives. So now that we've got resistance radio um, or whatever it's called, contacts, we can actually form contacts. That's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to go here to Mexico, which is wonderful. That's also going to unlock the black side there, and we get our resistance communication. So that allows us to know that the Chosen has completed their training, so now they can summon stun lancers rather than the usual boring dudes. Uh, however, the knowledge only goes up a tiny tick because we did beat him in combat, and we got some more dark things, um, and then we got dark events, I should say, and then we got some operatives, uh, what they were called, orders that we can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the covert options. Covert actions will not be ambush, which is very strong, uh, as well as move the skirmisher one that we had active onto the skirmisher thing. Alien debris is all cleared. Not a lot of power, and I don't think we have it. Well, we do have enough supplies to do stuff, but we need more power. So we're going to have to build a power relay at some point, or we could upgrade the power relay. That's going to cost us 80 what we're going to do and then that means that we need to have another engineer on the case for that although upgrading the power relay I think upgrades the power generally it does so that means we can just build it straight away we're going to go for resistance comms which means we can get a lot of communications with uh, the neighbors 
and then I can upgrade the workshop to get more gremlins which is what I'm going to be doing next although for now we're going to have to deal with having an engineer there to make the proving ground a thing. Infirmary is about to be completed as well which is fantastic actually it's completed straight away so that's fantastic um, it means that our dudes will be healed faster it also means we're going to get rid of any of the weaknesses that are built up or the stresses I can't remember what they're called the negative traits regardless because we do have one negative trait to go for uh, for Ahmed who is scared of I think it was Bernard Dot who was scared of Chosen but I guess Ahmed's got something as well regardless that's done we've now got another engineer who's free or Kilby is free to clear out that side we're reaching the bottom end of that so we are very quickly approaching all of our slots being dealt with I think that's a really good place to end the episode so thank you very much for watching everyone as we approach the end of the episode making contact finally we have another part of the resistance people look alive. I've just received word that XCOM is sending out a carrier of lots of goodies for us all and we want to get that to the med bay as fast as possible. Bradford sure took his time getting to us, even though we sent in the reports to that black site. I sure would like to know what he's playing at, what well, with our lot being on the front lines and all. Alright, here it comes. Everyone, move quickly. 